Um, the guys I chose, Cam Sutton and Detroit. You know, and I think a lot of people are, are wondering why I chose him in particular because you chose CJGJ. Some people would maybe even choose Emmanuel Mosley because you know these are some some bigger names that a lot of people know of, probably more so than Cam Sutton. And you know, especially Emmanuel no, Mosley being from a 49er. No, and, I like Cam Sutton, yeah. Cam I'm Sutton's familiar. really nice, nice, man. I, I, I like him a lot. I know he's just a nickelback, but this guy comes in in particular with a lot of leadership. He is the only DB. Um, I believe uh, at least the only corner that has played four more seasons in the NFL. Um, everyone else has played less. Okay. So for him to come into Detroit with that leadership and, and, and the, 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 you know, the, um, the attitude and, and, uh, um, ambience he got to experience in Pittsburgh, I think is a lot more valuable than people are making it out to be. Honestly, this guy had three INTs last year, 43 tackles, 15 pass deflections, only 47.9% completion allowed last year uh, with only 388 yards uh, allowed in total. So really just thrived to the utmost degree, both in man and in zone two. Um, had success against top-notch receivers like Tyler Boyd, Tyree Kill, you know, A.J. Brown. Can even cover linebackers and David Njoku as a corner. He's that physical of a guy, honestly. Um, you know, great timing with, with disrupting passes. Um, whether it's just it's swatting the ball away or just knocking the absolute shit out of guys, just the way we love it, you know, classic NFL football. And Cam Sutton embodies that man. I really, I really do love it. So he's my first guy for Detroit in a defense that is in dire need of some stability, especially in the in in, in their in their DB room, because it's oh. kind of gone downhill lately. We've been hoping for Jeff Akuda to pan out. I'm still holding out hope, but we'll inj injuries have kind of affected him. Him finding his footing, too, even when he's been healthy, has affected him. Amani Oruwari is kind of taking a step back, too. So they're, they're kind of looking for, you know, who's the next guy to step up. Um, next guy, Miles Sanders. I'm stealing off of Nick a little bit, you know, sadly. <laughs> he, he, he came with it first. Um, I He's my guy, man. I love it in Carolina. They're starting to get an offensive line going, too which I think really helps him out because obviously the Eagles, we all know, I don't like it too, that people kind of bashed Miles Sanders in, in terms of being in a unbelievable, in, in terms of categorizing it as an un unbelievably favorable situation being behind that offensive line, because it was arguably, it was favorable, but his touches kept on getting, it was here and there. It was touch. It was hot and go. It was definitely a hot hand situation at times. And yeah. also at the goal line, they would use him, but it's more of, they would still use Boston Scott out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, that's just Philly in a nutshell. It's just using <laughs> random shit at random times, you know, when it comes to their backs uh, and, and the backfield. Um, but like, it, but I think in, at the same time, he he utilized, he worked well in tandem with them. Like they did their things well, he did his things well, you know, individually. And it's showcased on the stat sheet. I mean, 1269 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns, almost five yards of carry. Didn't showcase his receiving skill set as much as we'd like, but I think he will when he's in Carolina. And getting to work around an offensive line with Taylor Moton, Ike McQuonu, who's on the come up, I believe. I think he had a solid rookie campaign, probably the best out of uh, most offensive lineman in the rookie class last year and Austin Corbett too, you know, who came from the LA Rams and, and is, is not wishing he was still in LA after the, the dumpster fire they've got going on at the, on, at the O-line spot. Um, he was top 13. Also, Miles Sanders was in tackles evaded with 16, uh, with, with, excuse me, with 64. Um, and I just, I love the guy that he, he's such a, you know, I, I don't want to use overuse the term moxie, but he really embodies that with how he's constantly keeping his legs moving He's smart in navigating the holes that are provided for him, and I think it's going to go well here in Carolina with that. Um, and it's a good enough cut. You know, I know he's not the most explosive athlete. It's not like we're watching, you know, the next Bo Jackson out of the backfield. But, you know, this guy is a good player. Let's just – let's 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 call it as it is. He's a legitimately good player. Maybe not a great elite player, but a good player, you know, and I think he deserves that respect. I, I love the fit in Carolina and filling in for uh, Christian McCaffrey. My last guy, Isaac Sayamalo. Uh, uh, say, uh, say Amalo, I believe that's how you say his name or say Amalo. I think it's say Amalo, excuse me for, for Pittsburgh, uh, yeah. um, guard out of Philadelphia, another Philadelphia choice. I had to go with that. Um, I really like this. This is a, a an offensive line that has struggled to find their footing for years now. It's yeah. almost like a, it's, it's like a spitting bad. image of my Chicago bears, honestly. Um, and, Just bad. Yeah, pretty much. thanks for rubbing salt in the fucking wound there. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Christ. Um, Sam Mala, though, he's filthy, man. 75 grade by PFF, which is a top-notch grade. Only one sack allowed last year. 
Um, good technique, square hips, inside hands, great trap blocker too, so he can kick out if you fucking need him to. Um, and maybe not a run maul, like run paving mauler in that offensive line, but he'll do a good enough job to set the tone, man. So I really like this, and I think it's going to do wonders, sneaky good wonders for Najee Harris this upcoming year. Um, as he fills in for, I believe he's going to be filling in, um, yeah, at the um, the left guard spot. Um, let's get to our next question. Talked about my Chicago Bears, America's team, that is. Uh, landing a huge haul in the trade. <laughs> Why do you guys give me that look every time I say that? I don't get it. It's the truth, and you know it. What? Um, <laughs> the, the, Bear, the Bears are America's team, you know? Oh, that look. <laughs> <laughs> Unfair. This is not cool, okay? America's not, team, huh? It's the truth, uh -huh. damn it. Uh -huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak it into existence. Sure, sure, David. J just sure. like... J just like my doppelgangers, David Beckham, I'm going to speak sure. this shit into existence. Okay. Time out. Did I just hear a doppelganger and David Beckham in the same? Look, if your mom tells you it's the truth, then it's the truth. Okay. That's a lie. <laughs> she never once said that. She, oh, she would they lie sure to, to that? Like that. Yeah. Sure. That's what I'm going. I'm going for LA Galaxy, you know, Real Madrid, David Beckham right here, but. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe, maybe one day these guys. Uh, okay, I was about to say if you're going, if you're going for David Beckham back, then like, <laughs> let me just get out the Clipper. We're shaving you, buddy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Real Madrid, not <laughs> Manchester <laughs> United. Real Madrid, LA Galaxy. David Beckham grew that shit out. You know, I know my soccer a little bit. Ah, uh, <laughs> so the worst David Beckham. Got it. <laughs> God damn it. Why'd you have to sneak that shit in, dude? That hurt. Because I'm not no, wrong. Never, you know that <laughs> you're I'm not, not wrong. wrong. You're you're not wrong. wrong. Thing, when when years you years leave long. from the Premier League or the La Liga, especially, to go to MLS, it's not a good thing, generally. It's, it's not, generally a, good not a good thing. Oh no, I I, uh, I just meant uh because he was he was better at United than he was at a totally. Oh, yeah, the Madrid, right. but then it, I think it was a decline even more at, at oh, the Galaxy. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I, as much as I love soccer, and I, I like Galaxy with the money bag. Yeah, it was, oh, it, it was that American moolah for sure, dude. It was, oh, yeah. <laughs> as much as I love soccer in the MLS, uh, the uh, the league still needs to get over it being a retirement league for a lot of these guys. <laughs> Jerry, it has become that, sadly. <laughs> like Zlatan, Ibra uh, Zlatan uh, uh, Ibrahimovic. Ibram yeah, Ibrahimovic, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Zlatan. Um, there's a couple Italian guys who came over recently. He did pretty well though, didn't he? Zlatan for MLS. Oh right? yeah, with uh, with with LAFC. Who's that? So we're getting off track. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> it's it, even more yeah. recently Gareth Bale with LAFC Gareth Bale? <laughs> uh, retired officially. Yeah. <laughs> we're doubling down, damn it, Nick. <laughs> no, we're we're changing damn, this into a soccer show, right? Damn now, scoon you know? we are. <laughs> Lose like 90% of our subscribers. Oh, fine. There you go, Nick. If you really want to do that and just sit back, just wait till I can start talking about F1. Huge for Najee. Absolutely. Amen. Oh, Richard Sickles, my guy hopping in the chat, preaching the truth. Thank you. Um, and I, you know what? I, I was a little surprised your Vikings kind of stayed a little quiet, a little dormant in this free agency. They were a little more quiet than – and losing Patrick Peterson. My condolences, man. My condolences. Um, condolences? That's a good thing for them. <laughs> no, I, Patrick Peterson was good last year, buddy. I don't know he about was that. okay. He, no, Pro Bowl level. He was Pro Bowl level. Trust me. Like, he, eh. he was good. He was good last eh, year. He's nowhere where he was going to be in Arizona. No, he wasn't quite on that level, but he wasn't far off. I think even his Arizona days, I think, were just a tad bit overrated. But 